eight and i thought oh hey maybe i should pitch an idea and rebrand it to attract their target audience because i'm their target audience and if i it doesn't appeal to my eye maybe i should help them change that and get more customers yeah and i, I feel like, like part of that was like the colors maybe it was like um to on the nose when it comes to halloween and i think that's something we all struggle with when it comes to branding of any kind so i decided to look at their instagram which i think we should audit together and look at some of their posts here to see what they're actually doing with their graphics so we see that there's like a logo here we see what the name of the event is and when the event is but other than that there's no other information here um oh that just refreshed for some reason <laughs> and then we have different kinds of posts here which is like oh let me make like a meme post because this is something that helps me interact with my community mm. so they have their strategy which is great and good to see they have some of the reels that they're posting and um some other activities that they're doing with the brand so i feel like when you're rebranding anything i want to start with the logo itself and not change it too much but because this is a live stream also so just for demonstration purposes i've taken these stock assets from adobe stock and um these are all extended licenses so i am able to change the color variations and like use generative recolor which was just re- like introduced at max yeah. and i'm really excited about that because i feel like while these are not the typical halloween colors they're still a little bit spooky So right. yeah the skulls that, are dead giveaway for the spookiness. <laughs> yeah the two on the nose graphic. Yeah. yeah. Um the plan so is that we just talked about the brand um their website and Instagram we're going to look and go back and forth from their website as well while we're creating stuff and we're going to rebrand so I did go ahead and make this text lock up with one of the fonts. We're going to talk about spooky fonts that you guys can use in your designs if you're watching this live. and um some of the new features that we introduced at max which i am really excited about i love the retype beta which is amazing if you have outline text or something and you've forgotten what font you had or if you wanted to go back to an outline text maybe you got a design file from one of your collaborator designer friends and they forgot to send you the font name you can just go ahead use retype and if it's in adobe font or something in your machine you can actually check that um yeah. within a few seconds so that's, that's pretty cool Um and then we're going to dive into making a poster design and maybe use a little bit of express to get into making QR code. So that's like all the fun stuff we're doing today. Um Awesome. Yeah, let's let's get into it. I think so, I'm going to start by I got to ask I got to ask before we jump in this is whole like um is it where you are in you're in Toronto, right? I am. You yeah. are. So it, obviously Halloween is quite a big quite a thing there. Um yeah. but where you were living previously is was it a thing? Mm-hmm. It was not a thing. I have right. never celebrated Halloween before this, so I'm really excited. It's actually my first Halloween. Um and while we're talking I'm actually working also. So in case you have any questions for me Flynn, let me know while we're <laughs> doing this. Um <laughs> I actually have never celebrated Halloween and I'm really excited. I actually DIY'd my costume this year, which is super exciting. Experience. Oh wow. I, am I allowed to ask what the costume is or is it a big reveal? Oh no, it is not a big reveal. I actually gave it away. It's the house this is fine meme. Oh yeah, the, the dog in the house. Dog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the hey, this is fine. Oh wow, <laughs> that's um very apt for this year, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like all the years ever since 2020. Right. Like <laughs> yeah. <the> team. <laughs> um also just very quickly, we are live as well. So if you guys have questions, uh we had two streams this already this week and we had some awesome questions come through. um a- around freelancing and and branding and we've been talking a lot about that this week. So if you do have questions for Annika as we're rolling along um or you know spooky season uh tips and tricks you can you can give us because it's Annika's first year Halloween. Halloween's not a huge thing here in Australia, but I do have kids that are pretty into it, so uh any tips mm. um for decoration or dressing up, you you let me know. But uh but yeah, oh, keep the question yeah. keep the questions Definitely. coming. It's always great to have questions as we're rolling along on Adobe Life. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to answer. Um I am sending all of these graphics to the back which somehow isn't working. So I'm going to check my layers panel really quickly. Where is it? Okay, here we are. Okay. So that was in isolation mode and that's the reason it wasn't actually sending it to the back. Um mm-hmm. I actually wanted to send the graphic back, which is so weird. I did not expect that. Um <clears throat> let's go back here. So I'm just creating this brand board. I feel like this helps me visualize how the brand's going to look. 
Yeah. And this helps me also like use these graphics um in any of the things that I'm creating in terms of like flyer design or if I'm creating social media posts using um Adobe Express as well. I feel like a lot of us have been like using Adobe Express for a lot of social media stuff. Lynn, have you been using it for any of the stuff that you create? Yeah, I've started using the scheduler a lot. Um which yeah. is good for me because I find it really I I'm one of those people that sort of will neglect social media for a month and then go, "Oh yeah, yeah. I need to feed Instagram um <laughs> things." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so the scheduler is good for me because uh, you know, if I find that I do have a bit of time to do something, I'm like, "Oh, okay, I can actually schedule out a couple of things that are coming up um yeah. rather than, you know, in the busyness of, you know, you know what I mean? It's sometimes you don't have yeah. any time to do it and then you just forget and then it goes. So the scheduler really mm. helps in that sense. Yeah, I um actually also love the scheduler. There's also like new features in the scheduler that released after Max, so I think this is really exciting. While we are here, I do actually want to outline this text and show you how you can actually use the retype feature. So all of this text is now like just vector shapes and I can't really click on it to see what font it is. Mm. I can show you on the properties panel that's not showing me what font it is, right? And I maybe want to change it to Haunted Tour or something. That's the name of the brand. and i made an error i just assumed it was haunted walk and now when i go back to do it so mm. um if you have the properties panel open on the right here and it doesn't matter what workspace you're working in so i'm currently in the essential classic workspace if this looks a little bit different you might be in a different workspace so don't worry about that there's a properties panel here where you can actually see the retype beta feature if i click on that a new window pops up and it just like is processing what the words are here So yeah. if you've ever I don't know if you've ever used something like this one where you like take a screenshot and then it like does a reverse image search so it's essentially that yeah. here but within illustrator which I think is really cool because I don't have to go to fonts.adobe.com which I also did in the past but now it's like an in app workflow which I really love personally yeah. I think that that just makes sense. I think something that's cool about this is I'm pretty sure this was demonstrated at Sneaks in like 2019 or something yeah. like that. I remember yeah. because one of the speakers did a whole did th- did three workshops in a row on how mm-hmm. you can take a photo uh yeah. his name escapes me but I'll remember for the end of the stream. You could take a photo of signage that you saw. Like say you saw some cool art deco signage but the font didn't exist. Um that you could take that and turn it into a typeface and that was his whole session and then it sneaks they were oh, like sweet. hey if you take a photo then it can kind of analyze and make this font oh, and all the people that did his right. session were saying hey man <laughs> did you know this was coming cuz <laughs> you just did a whole workshop you had you had no idea what was coming for sneak so maybe i guess maybe it that's how it works maybe like if you create something that's like resonating with the audience and then the team takes the feedback and then actually creates that yeah um, that's Absolutely. pretty cool yeah, yeah. So I like seeing it in the um, world like working like this. And it also yeah. works as well um from this does work from taking photos of um you know street signage. So if you see some like a sign or even if it's a sign painter so that that font might not exist, you can take the photo, yeah. bring it into Illustrator and analyze it and it'll give you, you know, the closest fonts that that can be found, which I think is like mm-hmm. super niche but like really valuable. Yeah. Okay, so while we're talking, I actually looked up this font and I'm going to click on enter. I think it didn't actually apply it. So once it pro- like completes the processing, it says double click to apply selected font to make text live. You can either do that or click on the apply button. I think I'm going to double click and it is live now because it says over here convert it to live text, exit retype to edit. Edit. And I can just go in and maybe if I wanted like a different variation, like a medium, I can change the font weight here as well. which i think it is really cool um i know there's someone in chat stacy says this was in photoshop um but i think i'm like a vector girl <laughs> and i i don't create any of my text lockups in photoshop so i think this is like super convenient for someone like me who makes all of the stuff in illustrator mm. um and i feel like that really changes my workflow so that's like one of the ways that you can use this but you can also use images um to actually get the type. So what I'm going to do is actually use one of these images and quickly take a screenshot. Um again, this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm not using any or anybody's images here. I'm just showcasing how you can use the retype feature. Okay, so this is a screenshot and I just want to paste it into my file here and then so none of this type is actually vector shapes too. Mm-hmm. And the great thing about retype is that it automatically detects because obviously there's like good contrast and it automatically detects the closest match to the type that it sees. So in this case, village is highlighted. It says double click to apply selected font to make that text live. 
you can choose any of these from here that you think works for your use case i think i'm going to go with the first one because the algorithm kind of gives you the closest match mm. so i can click on that and now this i think should be editable i'm going to click on apply and exit yeah here we go um that's pretty cool that this is now editable within the photograph so it's pretty crazy photograph. and it's vector right that's like edit- editable text yeah now this is editable and i can take it out of it and the rest of it is still an image so that is pretty spooky i think oh so hang on <laughs> I, i haven't done this this far before so it's actually taken the it, it's also separated what was pixel mm-hmm. from it so it's obviously using like a yeah. version of gen fill to approximate mm-hmm. the background with AI so you can pick it up and move it around. I didn't realize that yeah, it went it that is, far. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, if I can cool. ungroup this, I can show you that this is a this is vector. You can see that this is the font that was picked up mm. and this is still in the image. It says image trace, unembed, crop image and all of that. So for the one thing to do is I've pasted the image here so it was already embedded in the file and then I think that kind of helped the process like go smoother for me, but that's just my approximation. I don't really know this for a fact. but we can do another one and see what comes up so i still selected the same image and now it's kind of like trying to see what this thing is it's like kind of cutting it off that's the approximation that it sees but it still can make sense that oh maybe this is ghosts so mm-hmm. that's pretty cool i'm going to select the first one again double click to apply and it says convert it to live text exit to retype i think there's something that went wrong here because it wasn't completely selected mm-hmm. so it didn't exactly match it one to one and it still is a live text i can change the color of it to white here for instance and then i can move it around so this was just if i zoom in this was just like taken away from the existing photograph that we mm. have here and that just like made it to vector which is pretty cool and i think that is actually pretty cool that's awesome i'm um, just ca- clarifying something in in chat just asking around mm-hmm. uh retype so retype is available now it's after max it's available in retail so if you have a look at, and by that i mean it's just the standard one which side am i so if you look at annika's yeah. top it says adobe illustrator 2024 um so mm-hmm. if you can't see it uh make sure you update obviously um just in the creative yeah. cloud app and then um i think it's just a drop down menu isn't it annika or you can just search for it it is it yeah. is a drop down menu you can just use it if you have an image selected or an outline text selected or anything that you see is your mood board inspiration you can have that object selected or the image selected and it just appears in the retype like if in i click property, on the text in the properties in the properties panel yeah cool. there you go let us know if uh, if you can't find it yeah absolutely Um I think that's pretty cool. I actually did not see the image thing uh, before this either. So All right. Yeah, cool. I thought it wasn't just me cuz I <laughs> yeah, I would have done like a bit of a highlight of that. Um Yeah. One of I my think I should make like a TikTok TikTok video now. <laughs> yeah, do it for sure. I think that would be really cool. Um You know the best part about that is that now I can use Adobe Express to post to TikTok, which is super cool. I've not done that yet. So maybe I should do like a two in one sort of a highlight. That's cool. Oh, which is cool. Mm. Yeah. Um okay, so I'm going to grab some of the copy here. Um let's see. I can just like grab this because I don't want to waste my time just like making up copy. I can also fill in like um lorem ipsum here, but I think I'm going to go with this for now. And then maybe I want to change it to like a bold uh maybe like it up like but maybe I'll change the size. Mm. I'm going to do like a 36. And then I want to justify so I want to do this. Maybe that That's like a little spooky. I think the theme here is just spooky but just a different kind. I, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> we're, we're just making spooky type. Um all right, and I think we're done for like some of the things that we want to add to our brand. It's taking some direction. I do like where it's going. Um and we're already like how far are we into the stream? Are we like how far? Minutes? We're like 15 minutes in. We got ages. Okay. Ages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dead men we tell no tales but we do. I like that. I think yeah, cool. uh, I think they had like really cool copy on their website. So I was like, mm-hmm. okay, let me take inspiration from this. This is actually cool. They had have put like a lot of work in there into their website like copywriting and I really love that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm a fan. Um I'm just aligning everything. It's my OCD. Um I really want everything to be aligned <laughs> or everything to be bottom line. And here we have. This is how the first iteration of the brand looks like. I can go ahead and change the colors. So why don't we actually do that? Let's let's showcase generative recolor. So I'm gonna copy the artboard here. I'm gonna press Option, Shift, and drag so that I create a duplicate. Um, and this was my previous 
color palette that I got from the colors that I chose from mm. within the illustrations that I've used. But I'm gonna go ahead and select everything and see what happens. I've literally never done this before, but we're gonna do this live. It's a lot okay, of practice. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this um, new contextual taskbar, which I love because you can. It's like a floating panel, and um, if you've ever seen any of my streams before. I just like love floating panels. All my panels are usually floating everywhere, and some people hate it. It's a love-hate relationship, but I personally love it because it just gives me more like space because I just want one thing to be there while I'm working on something. Right. And so you have these things selected. The contextual taskbar pops up. Same similar to Photoshop. If you've used Genfill in Photoshop, and then you have recolor over here. Once I click on it, it's the old advanced recolor artwork menu, mm. but with an added panel here, which says generative recolor. And I have these nine prompts, which are sample prompts. And I think I want to use the trippy disco lights because that just gives me the spooky vibe. Um, even though it's not necessarily the words that you would choose, I would go for something like Halloween, purple, blue, uh, orange. I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. So we've got some results, and I do not think that the contrast would be. Like would work for us, but it might. I do like um, the purple here that mm. it has added. So maybe I will actually copy this. I don't know if this will work, but we will see. I'm gonna click. I'm gonna have this one selected because I think that's the one that has the best contrast. So I can yeah. have this one selected and click on generate, um, and see what comes up again. So what did that do? Did that say that I like this one? And and you're telling you're telling the machine. I going, think. Hey, iterate I on think. This? Yeah, I think the one that you have selected kind of helps it make decisions. Mm. But that's just like been my like way of trial and error that I've come to that conclusion. But it may not necessarily be true. Um, okay, so I don't think any of these are working for the base colors that I use. So I'm gonna click on reset, and it's sometimes like a hidden trial method. You have to go back and like look for something that really works for your colors. Mm. Um, okay, so I don't know, Flynn. You give me a Halloween prompt. What happens if we just like if if we throw in words like spooky Halloween mm -hmm. nighttime? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's see what comes up. Spooky, spooky Halloween, Halloween nighttime. nighttime. Speaking of good copywriting, okay. look at that. Um, suggestions, mm -hmm. chat. We might have maybe we'll throw one in from chat if anyone would be so bold as to as to throw one in. What colors yeah. would give us um, you know something Halloweeny? But it's interesting we're talking about not being too on the nose as well, right? The the, the branding you can, you can go so far yeah. where it's like the most is a designer's thing, right? The, the first mm -hmm. idea is probably you know not the best because it's Every what everybody immediately goes to, right? Yeah. So if you think about it yeah. from a, a advertising or campaign kind of strategy, mm -hmm. how do you set yourself apart? Um, Absolutely. The first ideas probably exist in a thousand other. 10,000 yeah. other places. So yeah. you want to be close to theme, but maybe not mm -hmm. right on. Not right too, on too close. It's not too, yeah. too close. Yeah. I feel like these colors are like still very muted, um, but they're still the same colors. I agree mm. with you on that. I like the purple here, but I think the contrast um, as far as the options we've gotten here with like this muted yellowish green color that we have here and the blues kind of like go yeah. and they're like very unconventional. You would never see this. Um, but at the same time, I really like this because it reminds you of like skull and like all the colors. Like it's not really beige, but it kind of is. It's like a different spin on it. And yeah. the nighttime kind of gave it that teal kind of blue color with the black as like one of the primary colors, which I think is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I think if we experiment a little bit more on this and go back to our recolor option, it could be cool to change the prominent colors here. Um, maybe you can decrease the percentage of gray that it has that's not what we wanted so i'm going to increase that oh that actually messed that up completely. <laughs> um there was a question in chat okay. i actually don't know the answer to so um let's see mm -hmm. if you do annika or maybe we can experiment um mason yeah. asks are you able to request high contrast in the prompt field like could you just um, say high contrast that? let's give it a go yeah, it's a good good that? suggestion yeah, that's a great suggestion. I've actually never done that before, so thank you, Mason. Makes sense because we're talking about contrast like so much with yeah. the type. We need it to be legible. Uh, so yeah, even if it doesn't do it. work, it's a great, great suggestion. Okay, it actually does kind does of that work. work. It does yeah. give me brighter results. Um, Not that one. I think the contrast here, like you can actually that's see good. some of the things, mm. and it's given me like a hue change a little bit, which is like. I can see some of the details. So let me actually click on generate. Maybe it rehydrates and creates better results. We'll see. Um, 
Okay, it does actually give better results. So that's a good call on that. Thank you. Good call. Um, Shout Mason out uh, to chat. Mason in the chat. Yeah, I love that. Okay. There you go. I think, I think I want to go with one of these. Um, let's go with let's go with this one. This one? I don't know which one's your favorite. I don't know. This this one is okay. We may be able to salvage this one. We'll see. Let's see. Well, that's the thing. You can always okay. tweak it, right? You could even minimize yeah. the amount of colors if you wanted to play it safe. Yes. Yeah. This is more than four, exactly. isn't it? This is. Yeah, it is yeah. more than four. Yeah. So um, essentially, I was in the generative recolor panel and I came back to recolor. Now, these little two buttons here, the show brightness and hue on color wheel, and this. Oh, no. Where did my graphic go? I just zoomed out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. This is this is the story of my life. Every time I create graphics in Illustrator, I just like try to do something, and something else happens. It's every designer. Um, okay, and then this is saturation. So I can change the saturation levels. I can increase the saturation. That kind of like changes the contrast a little bit. I do use a contrast checker. It's called contrast. If you're working on the map, uh, on the map, on the Mac, <laughs> you can pick a background color, and you can pick. Um, the font color it shows you the contrast and oh, legibility is, is that like a rating or something that is a rating so that's like the scale of contrast from the wcga um standard and if it says fail wca wcag yeah that's what it's called that's what it's called i said it the wrong <laughs> the score is really bad and it's failing that just means that if you put anything on this yellowish green tinge background which is um this color it won't work and it fail it's failing that means mm. anything that's like a smaller font size will not work because the contrast contrast is not good enough. That's just like something that I use personally because it gives me that kind of like vision. Okay, maybe these colors are not actually working. We can test these for the colors we had here. And I think this one will fail as well just because um, the white there is not really... Um, I can actually do that. Let's actually select this as a background. That's like a bonus tip. I wasn't really planning this, but like okay, this. let's see. I like this. It's so called, what's the app called says, again? I'll find it in It's called con it's called contrast. Oh, contrast. Yeah. It's it's very um uh, it's um I think it is designed and developed by Nothing Magical and Studio MDS. Um oh, it's designed by yeah. Matt D. Smith. I think okay, that cool. should help. Okay. So I think this is also failing, but if I select it to like black and then I select in the contrast tool the black color that I selected, it gives me a right Okay, this is legible. The score is good. It's a 7.99, which is a good contrast ratio between the background and the text. So I think we should go with this. Now I want to check it for every single thing that I'm creating, especially if you're doing something in like UX um, or UI. This is super, super useful because that kind of like gives, it's really cool. makes your design more accessible. And you might um, be able to read something like, like you might have great vision and you might be on a you know, yeah. retina 4K, you know, screen and all that sort of stuff. You're like, this is fine. This looks great. You're super zoomed in. But yeah. someone else might be reading it, you know, on an old mm -hmm. phone that's, you know, might be different, yeah. have different vision to you as well. Color blindness. There's like three different types of color blindness and even just normal, yeah. you know, kind of normal vision as well. So it's a great thing. Or even if you're just getting a bit, getting a bit old, your eyes are getting a bit tired, you know. <laughs> I'm not speaking Absolutely. from personal experience, but you know, you do get to a certain I am stage speaking. where you I'm just asking for a friend. Start um. increasing the font size on your phone. That's always a scary time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually would experiment. I don't really, I'm not a fan of these colors, but we're going to quickly jump out of this because it's taking too long. The colors are always like the part that takes me too long. But yeah. I think this like for anyone who's just like looking to get variations for their branding, I think this is a great tool to actually see how that works. Now, I feel like this has less contrast here, but I can quickly change that by going to recolor. Just have the thing selected and maybe I can decrease the uh, saturate, like the saturated color here and maybe add some white. Is that a thing? Can I do that? Okay. That just like changes the hue. I actually really like the hmm. combination of the browns with the blue. I think it's a classic combination. And now you might be wondering that, oh, this illustration looks a little bit different. It's not really because you didn't have that selected. That's another thing about the recolor that you can actually pick a color theme. So if I click on the eyedropper here, it's going to pick the color theme and apply it to that. It may not be the right, like the exact same colors, but it's still the same like family. But in case you want them to be the same colors, you would have to go do that while you have both of them selected. So that's like yeah. one of the ways they do. So, okay. 
let's go with the current one that we have and then we can maybe use recolor again um towards the end so why don't we see our plan again and see so this is like my mood board every time i'm doing like a live stream i come back to it to see if i like missed anything mm. um i think our next step is to like make a poster so let's go ahead and make a poster i do want to showcase a use case of like how you can use um the logo or whatever so i'm just going to use this little fill color that i have and maybe change the blend mode to color and then change the opacity a little bit oh, just so like instantly matches. spooky yeah instantly instant spook yeah. um and we're going to bring our logo here and maybe like place it on top so i want to make that on top i just use a shortcut for that and right now it's not legible um oh no what did i do i can't select this oh i sent it to back that explains it <laughs> i want to select this i actually want to ungroup this really quickly and then i want to select this guy and change it to like the lighter color that we had here and let's bring that in and we're going to bring that in here okay i like that's pretty cool that's like how you can use your logo on top of an image i think this is like a good check when you're creating like any kind of brand because it helps you like visualize how that's going to look on any kind of graphic that you create Okay, um let's actually go in. This is like a poster size that I have. I if I remember correctly, it's a 8 8.5 by 11 size. Um flat. Wait, is that right? No, that's not right. <laughs> 8.5 inches? Well, that's just a letter size. Yeah, I'm saying okay. it wrong. This is um a random size that I got because I was using like a Photoshop mockup, I think, and that had like the size of this artboard, but if you're actually creating a flyer, just like a FYI do make sure that you're using standard sizes um that you use like printing and ask your printer for that if you're not aware of it um we're going to go ahead and actually create something here maybe use some of the um illustrations that we have so i'm going to pick this one and then start with like big shapes i think i really love doing that and typically because i have my color palette here selected i typically honestly work with just black and white initially and then go in and add color but since we're We already have a color palette. I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna run with it. I'm not gonna care about how it's gonna look, but I am laying in shapes first because I wanna put in information. I wanna showcase what this is. I'm just putting in big shapes right now. Maybe I want it to be like, like so. Maybe I want this to be like a bit, little bit smaller. This is where my illustration is gonna go. And um, meanwhile, Flynn, or uh, you can let me know if there's any questions in chat or if you have any questions for me. Um. Do you in 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 Canada are you on the metric system? Uh wait. It's Commonwealth, right? <laughs> what what's the what's Well you the were best? talking about inches before and I was like I just realized I, it's going to be a point of contention like as we've as no, we merged with no. the global channel because it's like I cannot think in terms of inches and feet and all that stuff. It's all centimeters. I am millimeters. not, but because I grew up in India, I was always on the metric system. Right. And so that's like always in my brain. Yeah. And every time I look at like ounces, I get confused because I don't know what that means. Yeah, <laughs> I don't exactly. have a mental yeah, conversion scale. <laughs> I don't me know too. how that works, so it always is like a gamble. But um, yeah, our friends in chat, maybe they can help us. Like, what's what? What is your conversion? So every time someone says, "What's the weather like where you're from?" I just like can't tell. I couldn't tell you what this is in Fahrenheit. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, me either. No, it just doesn't exist yeah. in, in in my head. I'm like, it's 24 degrees. I'm like, my gosh, it gets so cold in Australia. Yep. And I'm like, no, that's yep. that's like t-shirt and shorts weather. It's I'm actually like, good weather. Yeah, it's nice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Well, I guess um one of my questions I had was around because you move around from lots of different apps. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I know you you kind of a traveler around of all of Creative Cloud like InDesign, Illustrator, yeah. Photoshop, um, Adobe Express as well. What are you finding that you're spending I excluding the live streams? What mm -hmm. are you finding that you're what app are you spending the most time in at the moment for other work outside of the live streams? Um, I'm just curious about I this because think... there's been so many updates to Express. <laughs> Yeah, I think the most of the time I still spend in Illustrator personally yeah. just because that's the kind of work that I do. Mm. And um I think the second would be Express. Um or if I'm using like it depends on the use case that I have, but I typically work with like brand identity, I also do some motion designs so and then or video editing if I'm creating like a tutorial video or like a video for someone for their product. Yeah. Then that that brings in Premiere Pro and um After Effects for me. Mm. But I think those are my top 
I mean, you just ask for one. I I, I can't pick one. <laughs> <laughs> and what about pick. everyone in chat it's as well? I'm 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 always curious because I feel like. Photoshop has definitely been the darling of the year with generative fill, mm -hmm. expand, and all you know, a Firefly integration and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, we've been spending a lot of time in in Photoshop. But yeah. I'm just curious, as the as we sort of we're sort of getting towards the end of the year, and there's just been so much crazy stuff. It wasn't just Max; it was like the whole year. There was like little yeah. updates here and there, and beta things, and you know, Illustrator's getting some love now with some of these features. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just very curious. Very yeah, curious. I would also love to know. Okay, so, oh, that's a weird choice. <laughs> I don't expect that font to do that. Okay, so <laughs> I actually got these off of Adobe fonts. I stumbled upon like a monster pack, which is super cool. So there's like fonts.adobe.com. If you don't know how I got there, it's just slash collection slash monster pack. But if you guys tuning in today or on replay, don't know how I got here. I just went to the website, looked looked up Halloween, and that was my keyword search. Scroll down, and you see like a font pack here. I it's love called the, the packs. Monster Pack. Yeah, they are pretty cool. They make your life so easy because then you can actually you can either use Adobe stock templates, you can activate the whole family as you see I have because I love fonts. I probably have fifteen hundred plus fonts in my machine that I never use. All the fonts, give me all. Um, and then you can also browse more font packs here. So if you've never used um, a lot of fonts, maybe you're an illustrator and you don't do a lot of text graphics, but you want to make your own t-shirt and you want to make your own like screen, like you can also like make your own t-shirt and press your design on the t-shirt for spooky season. Maybe that's your last minute DIY Halloween outfit. Maybe you can use one of these for that as well. Okay, jumping back into Love it. the design. I got sidetracked over there. <laughs> I love oh, yeah. the I love the fonts. I've I've used that a couple of times as well, where I've just downloaded the whole font. I kind of looked at it and went, yeah, there's a couple of things there. I don't know which yeah. one, and then just mm -hmm. activated them all and got into Illustrator, you know, really yeah. quickly and started playing with them because it's nice to see how someone else has used them. But then it's so much better to see them in context. So I just activate mm -hmm. the whole thing, and then you you know, usually I'm picking one, it's sometimes yeah. two from that font family. But just seeing it in context and just being able to play with it straight away, it's just too good. Yeah, I feel like it just makes your life really, really easy. Okay, so um, I did a bunch of things here. I was just like looking at the website and looking at when like when this event is happening. So I just like cheated a little bit, copied the dates there just so that I didn't have to think. And then I like, because this was like, I'm going to undo really quickly. And this was, this is how it got pasted. I just did, converted that to like uppercase and then I'm just like changing the sizing. So pretty much at this point, I'm just exploring experimenting with like the first iteration maybe we can change and switch around the um how the shapes look i think this is like my approach to whenever i create like flyers or anything of the sort i just like go in with like a blank ux design mindset where i make like these boxes which are gonna which like help me picture how i'm gonna put text on top of these so maybe here's the warning maybe this is like a ticket i'm gonna say admit one here Maybe there's like some extra space here. I can probably add this, this here, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it'll be too much, but we'll see. Only time will mm -hmm. tell. And then um, we added the main illustration here just because I wanted that to be like very illustrative element here. And then maybe we can add something that's like information about the event. Maybe this is like um, an English and French because French is the second official language of Canada, I think some of these events might actually be bilingual so it's always good to add that information yeah. here as well um i think i want to align this to this guy so maybe i can do like a right align and maybe like bring this up so again this is like all experimentation at this point i'm just seeing what works for my design at this point we'll, we'll see how it goes it's not supposed to be perfect in the first iteration i think it's like as designers it's really hard when you're doing production work to like really go back to the reminder and tell yourself that it's okay to create bad things first and then the good things come. Yeah. It's a bit like it's a bit like writing, like just write to start writing, like just get it out, keep yeah. going and then take yeah. a break and kind of come back to it. If you sit there and you're trying yeah. to be perfect from the very beginning, you can kind of get paralysis. And I think it's the mm -hmm. same. It's definitely the same with design. You just kind of keep rolling, keep kind of moving around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um okay, so I'm actually a question from just chat. using if you okay, yeah. if you don't mind, let's do it. Um, yeah. Alessandra asks, uh, she hasn't had a chance to use Adobe software for a while. Photoshop um, 
Illustrator, Adobe Express. There's so many changes, I don't know which one to go back to. Any advice on which one I should try again? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Alessandra, uh, thank you for the question. I think um, you should think about what you want to do with the tools. Like, do you want to create like something for fun? And if that's the case, I would say just start with Fresco because I think Fresco is great just to like get ideas out. I use Fresco all the time on my iPad just to get ideas out. Yeah. I know you work in art therapy. So like maybe if you want to do like sketches, use Fresco, get your ideas out. And then since you already have those in Fresco and if you feel up to it, you can come back to Illustrator and like start vectorizing them. I feel like that's really cool, especially with all the added features. I think Illustrator would be your get-go because you do a lot of illustrative stuff. Um, but that's just my assumption of how your use case is going to be. But if that's different for you, let us know and I can help you. But I think Fresco and Illustrator should be should be a go-to for sure, yeah. especially with the use cases that she uses it for. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, so I think these are some cool shapes. Okay, I didn't... I didn't demonstrate how I made these. All right. So this is essentially like, I just use like a circle and this is like my best. I love this feature and I feel like it's not given enough love. And um, it's the blend tool. And the yeah. blend tool creates a like really- Blend tool has been around forever. I think that's why it doesn't get a lot of love, but you can make crazy things yeah. with the blend tool. But I think blend yeah. tool was around like when I was studying design, like. Blend tool has been around for a while. Really long time. Oh, man. Okay, so I'm gonna go to object blend and make and see what comes up. That's not enough steps. So I can go back to object blend, blend options and change the spacing here to specify steps. Um, and maybe I want like 15 steps. We'll see how that works. And that's how it looks. That's too much because it's giving me all the solid color and maybe I don't want that. So maybe I'll, mm. I go with 10 and see how that looks. And that kind of gives me the effect that I want. It's a little bit different from here, but I feel like this is kind of giving me spooky vibes. Mm. And um, I forget where um, the tool is. The puppet warp? No, the free transform? No. Okay. And then you can like go in here and change the sh shapes. Yeah, that's cool. Like whatever you're making. So I like make it more organic. Maybe it's like a droopy ghost friend. <laughs> um, we don't know. We don't know. It's just a random shape, but it's like very like destructive kind of thing. Yeah. And then you can you can like go back and change how this look this looks. You cannot go back. That's what I meant. That's why I said destructive. Yeah. <laughs> what are wounds? Okay. And then um, similarly, you can like make as many anchor points and like change these shapes in any way that you like. So maybe that's one of the shapes. Sorry about that. Had to do a little thing there. Um, and then we can like go ahead and do this like any number of times and like get any of the shapes. Um, these are some of the basic shapes that I use. These are just like, like circles that were used with like the rec selection tool and I just changed that. So that's how nice. that was done. It's quite cool. Yeah. Like you can just kind of continually create these kind of geometric yeah. Yeah. assets. Yeah. I feel like they're like super cool, especially for like brand like event branding stuff just mm. because it gives you that kind of like look for it okay yep. how much time do we have left uh we've got about 15 minutes left today okay yeah okay let's be real rush now <laughs> <laughs> um, um also okay. yeah 15 minutes so if you've got if you're sitting there and you've got any questions um please throw them in chat while we while we have the chance while we have annika with us um, on uh, Behance or YouTube. I'll keep an eye on there as well. So if you've got any questions, you've got a little bit more time to throw them in. Absolutely. Okay, I'm just going to copy paste a bunch of stuff here just because I don't want to waste a lot of time. So it's just copy for showcasing this is where the copy is going to go. Mm. Um, I think I want to add like a warning sign here that, oh, this is a warning. And then what is, what is it for? What's the pricing? Maybe I want to add like a handle of the brand oh, yeah. as well. So it's called Haunted Walk. So I really want that as like a call to action. And now um, your type hierarchy will change depending on what you want your audience to see first. So it currently with the current type hierarchy and the type sizes that I've used, I'm trying to use only like two to three fonts in this with like um, most amount of font weights in the family. Just because I can reuse the same font family and make my whole design instead of using a bunch of different fonts. 
in this design right now there are three fonts but the size are not consistent i will make them consistent because this is just a first pass i'm experimenting here this one is called um fills and soft the one is called um however you pronounce this and <laughs> um i think there's another one here abril it it italics so i think having three fonts is also a bit too much but we can change that once we're once we're in the final design so this is like the structure and i think now we should go hop into adobe express to create like um a qr code and it showcases that really quickly i'm going to use their website as my input for the url nice. i'm at new.express.adobe.com and um i think there are quick actions here that are suggested to you on the home page but if you cannot find like it's not here for me i can go ahead and click on the arrow here it says generate qr code i can just put in my url paste it here and press enter or return key on your keyboard and it generates this qr code for me and it instantly if i scan it from my phone right now it will take me to the website does you it? can change the style it does okay let's let's check it let's check it live <laughs> yeah it came up that's cool oh cool yeah so you can change like um the dot pattern here as well within before downloading it and you can change the marker border as well you can change the um center as well i think i really like the classic look so i'm going to go with that you can change the color of this as well but i'm going to show you a really cool trick that will match your branding as like in illustrator so i'm going to hit download and it says that that's already in here i can bring that at an illustrator i just click the drag and that's my file that's cool. the png i'm going to paste it here size it down i think i want this to be on the thing because i assume this is like old school branding we're pasting these flyers somewhere Yep. So I want the QR code there because those people are going to scan with their phones because everybody uses their phones. Mm. So I want to bank on that and then use this QR code there. So I'm just going to align this in the center. Now this has a white background even though you might have seen that it's at PNG. That's like one of the things that you can fix if you want like a non like maybe I wanted to change this color to like the green or like one of the darker colors in my brand. I can go in here and do like an image trace really quickly. So maybe I want to do black and white logo, and then I can go to my advanced options, and then delete white. So and I say ignore color, and then I'm gonna click on expand. That does like five steps to do it, but now you see that there's no background, and this is all vectors. And it's, you know what? I'm gonna have to test it again. That's why I'm here. Let's see. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm gonna put this it's on the side. It the still top works. One. That's cool. I like there it. you go. Yeah. Verified. And uh, Adobe verified. If I change the color of this, it doesn't change anything. It would still work. Maybe we can test that out as well. We can test happens. it. That's okay. This is <laughs> this is what I this is what did you do today, Flynn? I tested QR codes live. Yep, that works. <laughs> that works as well. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Yeah. yeah we super we have cool. it. Um, approved. Evidence. Okay. And you can just like put it here. Although there are some, if you're creating packaging design, it is recommended to have a white background behind it. Um, but since this is just for fun, and I'm doing this for um, a flyer design, and it's still legible because there's like a really light contrast background here, and it doesn't have like an FDA guideline for my packaging, it's okay for me to put it. But if you're creating this on packaging again, fair disclaimer: check with the guidelines first, and then make any of the changes. Nice. Um, That's a cool, cool tip. I wouldn't have thought that image trace would would yeah. work. Basically, I would have thought that it might not. Yeah. You know, it might be slightly off, and therefore the link wouldn't work or something. But that works. Work yeah, great. that works. Yeah, I so think cool. I, I don't know, messed something up. There we go. Okay, and then maybe I want to add like text in here as well, and maybe some of the text in here as well. Maybe I want to say like scan to redeem. Maybe it's like a discount code um to whoever like stumbles upon this on the sidewalk, and they just get like a discount or whatever. Mm -hmm. And maybe I want to make like arrows here or something, so I can make like an arrow here really quickly. I'm gonna use the pen tool. And click something like this, which is just like a fill. And now it has like a stroke, and maybe I can make that bigger. And then I can add like an arrowhead. I feel like that's okay. Maybe the other direction. Okay, here we go. And you you have like all of these built in with an Illustrator. This is like also another underused feature mm -hmm. that you can just like create these. You don't have to make them by hand. Everything already exists in Illustrator, so you don't have to do any of this by hand. I think I really like this one. And I can change like the stroke size, which is going to change how big the arrow head is. And then I can also go ahead and use like 
the direct selection tool a on the keyboard to actually showcase this guy yeah, cool. and now if i change the stroke that's going to change that as well so that's nice. cool um we just had a question had a question as we moved on from the from the qr code i think i know the answer but yeah. we'll ask you um could you have changed the qr code colors using generative recolor as well or does that only work on vector images um you could have changed it oh that's interesting no okay so while it is an image you cannot change it but once you convert it after image trace then you can change it yeah because you did image so trace it, it was vector be... so you could change it to yeah. Any color, yes, as long as yes. the contrast was enough, I would assume. Exactly. From the background that, yeah. 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 So there you go. Yeah. Very cool. Great question. Uh, great I question. think I'm, I'm going to leave it to this for now, and then I can just like copy paste it. It's like a weird shape. I don't know. I'm not happy with this, but it's fine. Everything's fine. This is <laughs> Sometimes fine. on a live stream, you have to move on. This, was, like, this okay. is fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, like I said, you have to remind yourself that it's not supposed to be perfect in this moment. It's okay. It's okay if it's not perfect. Um, I feel like as a designer or someone who's learning, it's really like important to give yourself time. It's okay. Um, okay. Life lessons here. That's me. right. <laughs> All right. Oh, I actually love this one. Okay. Let me. Okay. I love this one. There we go. And That's cool. Yeah. And then I want to do this. Maybe I want to make like these a little bit bigger. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Oh yeah, I'm fixating on this little detail that we don't need to. Um, let's move on from this and let's see what we can do to like make a quick variation. I'm going to go back to my mood board and see what we have. Um, okay, we did all of this. We generated a QR code. We did recolor artwork. Um, we did text to vector also. The, oh, we did not do the X2 vector. Actually, how much time do we have again? Uh, we have about six minutes, I would say, to be comfortable. Okay, let's do something. Um, one last thing in the last six minutes. I think this is also one of the features that was released at Max. A lot of people don't know that you can use like your artwork style mm. and create a text to image, um, text to vector in Illustrator. So I just created this rectangular box here. Um, or actually a square, which is also rectangle. But we're going to use that. And in the properties panel, there's a text to vector graphic beta. And you can either, you can do like scene selection and have this toggle button on, which says match active artboard style. Yeah. So while I'm on this artboard and I have this shape here, it's going to generate whatever input you give in the prompt field and generate your output and replace the square with the output. So, um, okay, Flynn, I'm putting you on the spot again, but do you have like a spooky prompt for me? Because I want to, okay, so the ask is, and I created an illustration which looks like it was made by the same person who made these illustrations and I want it to be spooky. Well, I think that, like let's like test out skull. Let, let's test out like a, a, yeah, like a spooky skull or something, or even just skull. Yeah, just do skull, because it's already okay. going to take a lot of data from, yeah. from the page. So let's see how, mm -hmm. how close it kind of gets from yeah, there and then I don't know chat you want to help me out we don't have a lot of time but um what else what else is spooky uh like ghosts <laughs> pumpkins ghosts is spooky. ghost friends yeah I think this is getting all the colors here it's kind of taking like um the the other lost muertos theme yeah, here with like like the, the day of the dead stuff right yeah 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 that's what I, that's the vibe I think I'm getting yeah, I think that's like kind of giving it because that's like most of the input that you see with skulls. Yeah. But um, it is still picking the colors, which I think is a really good like place to start. Oh, this oh, is got cool a start. haircut. I like that. Um, <laughs> so it's obviously that's doing that photorealistic good. kind of version yeah. where there's more of an illustrative yeah. style. Mm -hmm. So is there a prompt or is there a way that we can kind of tell it? No, I want it to be a bit more sketchy, like a bit more. Maybe we can say, maybe we can say hand drawn skull. Let's see if that does anything. I've never experimented with this, so we'll see what the results are. Um, yeah. Okay, we're it's generating. Bad. This is like the Last of Us. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what comes up. Okay, it's actually not bad. It is not giving. Still not. I think this one is still like similar in terms of like how these details mm. are made. I'm going to make this bigger just so that we can see. You can go ahead. Maybe if this is like a head start and you just like illustrated this sideways facing yeah. um, skull here, which is like lying in the coffin. 
we could have like used this and like some of these shapes to actually make this guy which is less detailed maybe you can say um less detailed maybe that does something we'll see so this is still in beta which means the team is still working on it so you might be like might get some unexpected results mm. um so it's like always great to give feedback there's user voice as well which um you can find on the product page which is super cool i imagine yeah, that we I get think... more options in illustrator in the next iteration because some of that stuff exists Absolutely. in firefly already right so you can choose the yeah. style and all that sort of stuff from drop down and i imagine that's yeah. coming i don't know for sure but i would guess that that, yeah. that will be coming very soon which would be really cool for something like this yeah absolutely um okay so i think we're almost at a close i do want to talk about tomorrow's plan because there is another stream with us tomorrow cool so um we created all of this today and we talked about like how you can make a poster design how you can use recolor artwork how you can use retype um beta as well and i think we covered pretty much all of the things that i had planned for today which is super cool to see and then on day 2 which is tomorrow same time same place we're going to create a brand library in illustrator which is a creative cloud library and then i can make like a brand in adobe express and i'll also showcase how to convert that library to a brand so you don't have to manually put in your logos um if you've never used express before i'll be showing that from scratch as if you've never used express before but if you have um i'm happy to answer any other questions as well so come back tomorrow and then we're going to be making some fun animations using these um illustrations in adobe express and some cool. social graphics to promote the brand as well and then if we have time maybe we'll dive into video we'll see only time will tell but you have to come back <laughs> i love that you you're such an experienced streamer you've always got one or two things at the end it's like if we have time you never know um <laughs> yeah if time permits if time permits so well, that that is awesome it's been wonderful a couple of we got through so much stuff in uh just under an hour um yes yeah. as anika said uh same channel same time uh, it's 11 a.m. uh stream here uh, i don't know what time it is for you anika it's Five or six. It is eight p.m. Eight p.m. It is eight、yeah. p.m. Eastern time and Eastern. five p.m. Pacific time. Well, there you go. Thank you very much.、Um, so yeah, thanks, chat. Thanks for the questions. Thanks for the comments and things like that. Thanks for tuning into Adobe Live.、Um, I've been Flynn and she's been Annika, and we will catch you in the next one. Bye. Thanks, everyone.